welcome back to this second message in our series at the table. We're so glad that you're able to join us today and looking forward to what God wants to do in all of our hearts and lives uh, through His Word. As we look at the book of Luke, chapter number 14, we're also going to be looking at a couple of verses from Luke chapter number 15. So Luke chapter number 14 and Luke chapter number 15, if you want to hold your hand there, we'll be there in just a moment. Uh, Last week, we talked about the theology of food, and we went all the way back to the book of Genesis and talked about how God has given us food as a gift. It's part of his good provision. We also looked at the very last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation, and talked about how one day uh, those of us who know Christ as our Savior will be invited to enjoy a feast, what we refer to as the marriage supper of the Lamb as we spend eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We also look at some of the feast in the Old Testament and how God used food to give us memories and, 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 and connect food with memories, as he did with the children of Israel uh, in the Passover and, and many other feasts. And how oftentimes in our own lives, We think about our favorite foods, and they're often connected with a visit to grandma's house or connected to a a favorite memory from our childhood or maybe connected to a favorite restaurant or a favorite uh, memory that we have of of Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever it might be, and how food is such an important part of our lives every day, and uh, God uses food. He used food in the Old Testament to point to the bread of life the water of life, the Lord Jesus himself who would come and give his life for our sins. Well, today we're going to be looking at the message I've entitled, You Ate With Who? You Ate With Who? And, and the whole message is, is, is based on the fact of the people that Jesus ate with at his table. Some of the people that Jesus ate with, some of the people that Jesus sat with, some of the people that Jesus spent time with, at the table were not people that uh, we might expect. They were not always the uh, religious gurus of his day. They were not always the people that seemed to be righteous or have it all together of his day. But oftentimes they were people that society looked down upon. They were people that society looked at as wicked and ungodly people. Yet those are the people that Jesus would often bring to his table and share a meal with. And so uh, they were surprised and had the attitude, you ate with who? Well, take a look uh, in our uh, Bibles this morning, Luke chapter number 14. Notice with me, first of all, verses 12 through 14. The Bible said, uh, the Bible says that he said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. There's three tables that I want us to look at this morning in connection with this message. You ate with who? The first table that I want us to look at is from these verses that I just read, and I'm going to call this the ministry table. The ministry table. Now, Before we delve into these verses, we need to understand what's going on. If you look back at the beginning of chapter 14, Jesus had been invited to the table of a ruler of the Pharisees, verse 1 tells us. People were watching Jesus very carefully, and as they were dining, they were sitting with a man who suffered from a physical condition called dropsy something similar to what we refer to as edema, swelling in the limbs. And they were eating with Jesus on the Sabbath day, and Jesus asked them a question in verse 3 about whether or not it's lawful to heal someone on the Sabbath. They didn't answer. In their silence, Jesus 
chooses to heal the man and send him away. And then he responds to their silent criticism in verse number 5. Notice what he says there. It says, And he said to them, Which of you having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day will not immediately pull him out? You see, they had been watching Jesus carefully, but he had been watching them carefully as well. And one thing that he noticed about them is how they were jockeying for position around the table to sit in a place of honor. These places of honor were, as the life or, or the Faith Life Study Bible says, these were prominent seats where attendees were highly visible and likely close to the host or other distinguished guest. And so in verses 8 through 10, Jesus reprimands their pride and hypocrisy, and he then sums it up in verse 11 by saying, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And so to further emphasize his point, Jesus gives clear instructions about who to invite to a dinner or banquet and to avoid all this jockeying for position and avoid a show. And that leads to the verses that we read a moment ago. He said, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Jesus says, when you minister to those people, you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. You know what Jesus told them to do? Jesus said, invite the social outcast of your day. Invite people to your home that could never repay the favor, that could never invite you to their home to invite people to your home that may not even have a home. You see, many of these people were poor, crippled, lame, and blind, and they were considered to be that way because of some sinful behavior in their life. That was not always the case, of course. You remember the story in John chapter 9 where the disciples asked about a blind man. They said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Even Jesus' own disciples assume that the man was born blind due to his sin or his parents' sin. But it's these people, the outcast of society, that you often find Jesus ministering to. Is it that why he came? Is it that what he said when he read from Isaiah and Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 19? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You see, Jesus challenged the Pharisees to use their table for unselfish ministry opportunities rather than self-centered purposes to see who could put on the biggest and best banquet and put on these big feasts with ulterior motives of being invited to the next big feast themselves. But what if you and I chose to use our table for ministry? What if you and I used our tables to invite those to our homes to sit at our tables, those who could never repay us by inviting us to their home or to sit at their table? Many of us watching this video probably remembers Marcia. As far as I know, Marcia was never given a funeral. I could not even find an obituary for her in the paper. But there were people in our church and others in the community who gave Marsha rides, who took Marsha out to eat, who took Marsha clothing and toiletries and helped Marsha do her laundry. There were people in our church who who literally cleaned up after Marsha when she had accidents. Let me remind you of the words of Jesus. You will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. 
And there are others, literally thousands of others, who live within just a few miles of this building and a few miles of your home and my home that God is asking us to minister to. It might be around the table at your home. It might be around the table of a restaurant. It might be around one of the picnic tables outside of this building or one of the picnic tables at Presque Isle or a local park. But dear friend, we need to use our tables for ministry. Ministering to those who may never be able to repay us. But you know what? True ministry does not look to be repaid. True ministry looks to give as Jesus gave. Isn't that what Jesus said? I didn't come to be ministered unto, but to minister. Ministry Pass, a sermon resource website, said this, Jesus delved into a place where the religious elite were unwilling to go. As believers, we must ask ourselves if we are willing to participate in God's work beyond the comfort of a neatly arranged place setting, inviting people into our lives to share a table and a story that might open a door to healing and restoration, both culturally and spiritually. And I want to ask you today, I want to challenge you today, please do not let these verses and this message fall on deaf ears. Are you willing? Are you willing, but will you do it? When will you do it? Why, why not this month? Why not this week? Why not find someone to take out to eat, someone to invite to your home, someone to drop off a meal to, just to say, I love you. Jesus loves you. And Jesus wants you to have a place at His table. Let's talk about that table. What I call the Master's table. Notice in verses 15 through 24 of our text here in Luke chapter 14, it says, When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, Jesus said to him, A man <clears throat> once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet he sent his servant, to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field. I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have uh, bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to the servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done, and, there, uh, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled for I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste of my banquet. So in response to what this man said in verse 15, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God, Jesus chooses to tell a parable. It's a story about a man who invited people to his banquet. And in this day and time, people would be invited in advance, and they would make their commitment about whether or not they would come. In a sense, they would... RSVP, and once the banquet was ready, the host would send out his servant to make sure everyone was aware that the time had come and they would be expected to keep the commitment. But on this occasion, this host had invited many. Many well-meaning, good-intentioned people had responded positively to the invitation, but when the time came, some of them began to back out and make excuses. You see, these people had become preoccupied with things considered to be more important than the banquet that they had been invited to and that had been prepared for them. Well, the master was furious. and He told his servant to go back out and search through the streets and lanes of the city to find the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. Society at this time would consider these people losers. 
But the real losers were the well-intentioned people who had put off the gracious host with lame excuses. And the servant did that, and he comes back to the master and says, there's still room at the banquet table. So he says, go back out and compel people to come in. Now remember, this story is in response to what the man said in verse 15. This story illustrates something about the kingdom of God. There are many who intend to be in the kingdom of God. They intend to, be to, to go to heaven one day. They intend to get right with God. They intend to respond to the invitation, but they become preoccupied with things that are less important and distracted from the gracious invitation of Christ while they deal with life, buying stuff and starting families. They're distracted and they're focused on temporary things, and then they end up missing out on eternal blessings and the eternal offer to take a seat at the master's table and to be covered by the righteousness of Christ. Well, what about you? Do you have these good intentions like those people did? You keep saying, one day I'll get right with God. One day I'll get serious about serving God. One day I'll repent of my sins and embrace what Jesus did for me. One day I'll quit playing Russian roulette with my soul. One day. Yet there's going to come a day when the banquet doors are closed. And your one day will be too late. Someone rightly said the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The road to heaven is paved with the righteousness of Christ that can only be received when you turn from yourself and your sin and you embrace the resurrected Christ and what he did for you on the cross. Jesus says, or the word of God says in John chapter 1 verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. So we've seen the ministry table, using your table, using your realm of influence, using your home, using the things that God has blessed you with. Maybe it's a boat, maybe it's a house on the lake, maybe it's a RV, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a talent, it, maybe it's time that, that God has given you. Using those things to minister to others, to invite them to come to the master's table and then we see thirdly and finally what I call the missional table. The missional table. Look at chapter 15 now. The Bible says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, Notice what they said. This man receives sinners and eats with them. Aren't you glad today that Jesus receives sinners? <laughs> where would you be right now, if you're a Christian, where would you be right now if Jesus did not receive sinners and eat with them? We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God in His grace and in His mercy and in His goodness invites us to come to His table. That is His mission. And as these tax collectors and these sinners were getting close to Jesus, He didn't push them away. He didn't, he didn't look down His nose at them, but rather He, he offered them. He, he reached out. He embraced them. He invited them to have a place at his table. Is it that why he came? Was it that his, his mission, didn't he come to seek and to save that which was lost? Didn't he come to call sinners to repentance? Their criticism, these Pharisees, their criticism led Jesus to share three parables that demonstrate what happens when repentant sinners are found. There's a heavenly celebration when the lost sheep is found. You see that parable in verses 3 through 7. 
There is a heavenly celebration when the woman discovers her coin that she lost in verses 8 through 10. And then there's a celebration when the lost son, the prodigal son, comes home. Verses 11 through the end of the chapter. You see, Jesus' table was not only a table of ministry, ministering to the poor, the lame, the blind, ministering to the outcast of society of that day and time, But his table was also missional. In other words, he had a mission. His goal was to seek and to save that which was lost. Those without Jesus. His table was missional. And it didn't matter if he was eating with publicans and sinners or sinners that called themselves Pharisees or feeding thousands of people with a little boy's lunch. Jesus never lost sight of his mission. I quote Ministry Pass once again, and they say, Jesus is illustrating that his purpose in eating with those who are not welcome at the religious leaders' tables is bigger than they understand. These meals are not to indulge, but to restore and reach out to those who have a great need. And so I close this morning with two. Simple questions. Number one, have you accepted your invitation at the table? You say, well, Pastor Darrell, I've got good intentions like those people had. I I plan to be in heaven one day. I plan to serve Jesus one day. I plan to, to get back in church one day. I plan to become a Christian one day. Dear friend, I'm going to tell you, the banquet is ready. And soon and very soon, the door of opportunity, the day of salvation is going to be over. The door of opportunity is going to be closed. Are you ready? Do you know Him? Don't shun His invitation. You see, you keep talking about it. You keep intending to follow Jesus. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to yield yourself to the pursuit of the Holy Spirit. One day the doors will be closed and it will be too late to respond. Are you seated at the Master's table in that sense? Have you responded to the invitation? Secondly, this message is for Christians, or this question is for Christians. How are you using your table to invite and influence others? How are you using your table for ministry and mission? You say, but Pastor Darrell, I'm not a good cook. Pastor Darrell, I don't have the gift of hospitality. Pastor Darrell, I I don't have a place. My home's not big enough. My home's not nice enough. My home's not clean enough. And we go on and on and on and we make our excuses. Maybe you don't have the best hospitality skills. Maybe your table is not a kitchen. Maybe your table is a deer stand where you can invite a young man to go hunting with you and use that time for ministry and mission. Maybe your table's a boat where you can take a family out skiing or a family out on the lake or a family out fishing and use your boat as a table of ministry and mission. Maybe your table's a fishing pier. Maybe your table's a shopping mall. Maybe your table's a road trip. Maybe your table is a book club or a bowling league. The point is, we are to use our life, we are to use our time, we are to use our treasures, we are to use our talents to invest in ministry and mission and influence people for Christ. Not so we'll get something back. Not so they'll do it for us. Not so they'll pay the next time we go out. 
but because we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus in their life. And let them know they have a place at our table. They also can have a place at His table. You ate with who? That might mean that you'll eat with a homeless person. That might mean that you'll invite somebody from the city mission over to your home for Thanksgiving. That might mean that you'll go to the city mission and serve on Thanksgiving or Christmas. That might mean that you'll donate blankets this year for a blizzard of blankets and give to the upper room. That might mean that you will serve at the rescue or or the uh, warming shelter this season. What are you doing with the time, the talents, and the treasures that God gave you to minister to people and to be on mission? Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this message today. As you can see, we're continuing to get things done in our building. Things are progressing slowly but surely. And we need your help. We need your prayers. We need your faithful financial support as you continue to give to Flagship Church and its ministries. May God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.